Okay, just to start the recording, welcome. Uh, thank you to everyone joining this uh, orientation session, uh, both my real-time audience and people who may be joining by recording the video later. The, uh, the, the recording will be posted as soon as possible after this orientation session. Let me put my usual, what will become, my usual welcome message in the chat uh, for really two reasons. Sorry, my I'm gonna turn on micro turn off microphone for oh one of the things that I have in my room. <laughs> um, I'm gonna put my uh, usual welcome message in the chat so that um, I can explain ways people can ask questions and, and, and Zoom generates a chat file in the recording. So uh, let me just type that in. Welcome, thank you so much for joining this orientation session. Um, everyone joins this Zoom meeting muted. If you have any questions, please feel free to unmute yourself and ask. You can also put your question into the chat window. Now, uh, I'm going to briefly drag the chat window into the shared screen so that you can see what it looks like. Now, um, if you have any questions, or the way the Zoom records the meeting, the chat is recorded as well. Now, so if you are uh, sending the chat to everyone, it'll get captured in the recording. If you want to ask a question that is not captured in the recording, one way you can do is you can send it to me as a private message. I will usually be careful about showing this chat window in the shared screen so that um, um, so that if you have a question, you don't want the question to be recorded, then you can send it to me as private chat. So let me just type that in. If you have a, a question you would like to ask that you prefer not to be recorded in the uh, recorded, then please send it to me as a private message um, and I can address the question uh, without the question itself being recorded. So let me move this off the screen so that, um, so that <laughs> if anyone sends me a private message, it's not in the recorded the shared screen. So, um, so my name is Andrew Park. For people who are watching this recording, uh, I'm your instructor this semester. And uh, I introduced myself in a few different places. I think I introduced myself in the syllabus and you should also see one of my introductions in the introduce yourself discussion. So I'll uh, keep it short to, to just to say that um, I've been teaching physics 10 at College of Alameda since uh, spring 2016. This class was, in fact, my uh, my introduction to teaching online. I've been teaching physics in some fashion since 2006, and for those 10 years until 2016, I haven't really taught. I don't think I taught anything online. I've used the learning management system, but online education just is not as popular in physics. So this class was my introduction to teaching online. It's my... Uh, it's <laughs> this semester I get to teach two of my favorite classes, which are physics 10 and physics 4C. So, um, so I, I guess I'll leave it there as far as the introduction goes. If you have any questions, we have a whole introduction uh, discussion, and uh, I have a post there. You can ask me questions there. I'll answer it. Um, so. Uh, so we have a whole introduce yourself discussion there. So, um, so I'll leave more details there. Uh, if you have any further questions, let me know. So the purp main purpose of this orientation uh, orientation session is to make sure that everyone knows um, some of the quirks and details of this class. Um, with uh, online classes like this, it, it's. Uh, um, it's when you learn and teach online, you really appreciate some of the things you've taken for granted in a face-to-face -face class. Because in a face-to-face -face class, you go to the lecture and if uh, some issues come up, lecture, the face-to-face -face lecture becomes a very natural place to address all the questions. And 
uh, in an online class, you don't really have that. So you have to be deliberate about uh, making sure that the things that are sometimes automatically taken care of are now taken care of. And in fact, one of them is making sure that there's a line of communication open. Because again, in face-to-face -face lecture, there's an expectation that everyone comes to lecture once in a while, and that becomes a place where I can see people, you can see me, and we can talk. But in an online class like this, um, all the communication is online. Uh, this uh, a virtual class session is one of the ways this is done, uh, but it's not the primary way. The Really, the main way will be through the Canvas messages and other ways that Canvas communicate. And um, what I would do, and th this was in the my very first announcement. And what I would like to highlight in this orientation session is to make sure that everyone has done this already. Um, so <laughs> this was the very first thing I asked you to do. And it's because it's very important. Uh, email is really one of the most uh, important uh, fallback method. So most of the time I won't be communicating by default through email, but when I see people haven't logged into Canvas, are not doing the work, then one of the ways I would reach out first is through email. And the email address I have for everyone is um, Peralta email. So I would like to make sure that you uh, are either checking your Peralta email regularly, that might be the case if it, that's your main email, um, and in the likely case that's not, I would really strongly recommend that you forward your Peralta email to something that you actually use. Uh, I have a short set of instructions here, and I noticed in um, organizing the orientation material for this semester that they added this uh, link um, to the, the, the intro. So if you look at the Canvas orientation and student resources, one of the links here is explaining how to forward your Peralta email to, it says another email address, but really the email address that you regularly check. So uh, make sure you have done that so that when um, when I'm reaching out to you by email, that it's uh, something that you will have a good chance of seeing in the next uh, 24 hours or so. And so that's uh, the probably the most important thing in terms of making sure that um, there's a fallback, uh, as in there's some way for me to get in touch with you. And in fact, uh, I have it on my list to start calling people. So if I go to people tab, you will see a few people who have never logged in. <laughs> they are on my list to call tomorrow so that I can at least say I've done everything to reach people who haven't logged in. Um, so that's one. The second thing is the most regular communication for the class is actually done through Canvas. I'm not really sending you email on a regular basis. And the way the Canvas works, you have to have the notification settings set up correctly um, for you to receive messages the way I think you are receiving. And when you look at the notification setting, I will go show you mine soon. Uh, there are really three things I strongly recommend that you set as notify me right away. And uh, I will explain why on the screen. So you can go to notification setting either following this link or if you are not on this announcement, you can go to your uh, profile, click on notifications. Let me do control click. Um, that'll um, show you your notification setting. And you can see um, my default preference for a notification. For most of them, for me to notify immediately. And, and that is really what I would recommend that you start out as a default. And you know, every now and then you will see that you are getting too many notifications about something, then you can dial it back down. I think I did that with all submissions. This used to be notify me immediately, and then I was getting too much because a single assignment with a notify immediately, I would get 30 different <laughs> notifications for every single submission. So when something is late, I get notified immediately, but everything else I just get daily somewhere now. But so unless you have it at a more immediate setting, you wouldn't even notice. Like if you have anything set as notifications off, 
you could be missing something and you wouldn't know until something bad happens. So the so my bias is to set this as notify immediately and I realize you have your preferences and you have a you should have it set up in a way that it works for you. Now one uh, recommendation that I would ask you to consider is to please have an announcement as a set as notify immediately because um, like these uh, three announcements you have seen posted here I um, this is a uh, what I would use for something that back in the old days, 10, 20 year, years ago, might have gone out as class-wide email. So when I post an announcement here, I want them to be treated like something that would go out as a class-wide email. And the way it, it would work is everyone has this set up as notify immediately. Because sometimes I'll post something for something that will happen later in the day. And although, you know, it will should be most of like a reminder. I'm not going to spring something on you with a less than 24 hour notice. But when you have a, something like a daily summary, you get the summary only at like 6 or 8 p.m. So if like if I post something at 10 p.m., then it'll take you like 20 hours before you see it. So I would really recommend notify immediately here. And um, I would uh, ask you to have a conversation message um, to set up to notify immediately. This is so that, so my main way of uh, sending messages to students in the class is through Canvas, uh, the Canvas conversation or the message tool. And um, so I use this like I would use email, and <laughs> the only way it actually works is if it actually gets sent to your email um, as immediately as an email would. And the reason I prefer can uh, I preferentially use Canvas messages so that it's a place to organize things. You know, you use your email for other things too. And um, if uh, you know something is course related, this uh, can be one place where you get everything. So, so. Normally, I would reach out to people individually through Canvas message, and uh, for that to work, <laughs> it just has to be said as notify immediately. Um, and finally, um, I noticed this uh, only about a year ago. So the, it has to do with the submission comment, and it has to do with how I was grading people's work and leaving, mess, leaving feedback on the work. And I was leaving it as a submission comment, and then I realized uh, towards the end of the semester that for some people that they've never seen them. <laughs> and, and I tracked it down to basically this setting here. And um, so when a particular comment is associated with the work that you submitted, I think I prefer to leave it as submission comment so that you can easily see what assignment it's about. And for that um, line of communication to work, this should be set as notify immediately. Because if it's not, the comment is still there for you to see, but you might not see it until you happen to be looking at your grade book or something. And sometimes the the submission comment is about how you how, about the things that I hope you do, do differently in your next submission. And uh, if it takes you a while to see it, then you know it takes you a while to see it. So, um, so I would really strongly recommend that those three things be set as notify immediately, even if your preference is different from mine, and then you don't have everything as notify immediately. I think this one in particular is a common one for people to not set as notify immediately because depending on how some classes are run, there can be really hundreds of discussion posts and I get that you might now want to get, um, notification all of those one thing i would ask you to consider if you might set discussion which is a new discussion topic to set a, set that as notify immediately um so that this is so that um uh, so when this recording of this video this uh, orientation session i am going to post it as a new discussion i've tried out a couple different ways of organizing um recording posts and the way that it worked the best was to post it as a new discussion post. I can pin it, I can make it easy for people to find. And when I do that, if you have this set up as notify immediately, you will get a notification of the new discussion topic immediately. Um, so for the first few times, I will also 
uh, posting the announcement, hey, the recording is available, but um, I'll stop doing that after like first week or so. So I do recommend that you set this as notify immediately. So, um, so that's uh, really the one thing I want you to highlight in this orientation session, because it is really one of the things that we take for granted in uh, in a face-to-face -face class. And in this online class, we have to uh, it needs your attention to <laughs> make sure that it's set up the way that uh, we've been taking for granted. Um, Sorry, I forgot to uh, explain one thing about my setup. I <laughs> realized that I was looking at the side. So, um, so I should have done this explanation at the very beginning of the recording. Uh, in my setup, I have uh, I have two screens set up. And um, so I have my main screen here. That's the shared screen that you are seeing. And I have a second screen, which is where all my other windows are. That's where my chat window was before I dragged it over here. And that's where my all the participant window videos are. So actually when it looks like I'm looking off to the side, that's when I'm actually looking at the my real-time audience, real-time participants and the chat window. And when it looks like I'm looking at you, I'm just looking at a camera hole here. That's just the way video conferences work. And uh, so when it looks like I'm glancing off to the side from time to time, that's when I'm checking to see if there are any questions that people want me to address. So, uh, so that's my setup. So, um, so with that, any questions? Now, one of the ways I really strongly recommend that you consider um, participating, especially if you're here in real time, is to use the chat to uh, either uh, leave comment or ask questions. And uh, chat really works well, really works well for um, two reasons. One is that, oh, wait, I think I heard someone say something. Question? I have a, I have a question. Um, yes, please. Um, so for the, I, mean, I read it, I think I've and seen it in the syllabus, the book. So basically the outline you have for us is like online. We can read like the chapters in the book. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I will show you the chapter sections um, in this portion of this orientation in like five minutes. Okay. Yeah. So if you're wondering if there's question. No, I'm sorry. Okay. That was it. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, and I'll show you there. If you anyone was wondering if there was something you had to purchase, no. If you're in Canvas, you're good. You're good to go. Um, everything here is done through Canvas and I will show you where the resources are. Um, so so, so uh, thank you for the question. And, uh, and unmuting yourself and asking is definitely one of the ways you can participate and make sure your questions are addressed. Now, sometimes this happens. You are holding your question for a natural break in which to ask and, um, and you will find that in this especially recorded online uh, video virtual class session that I keep, I, I'm kind of talking on and on with almost no break. And that I guess <laughs> the quickest way for me to explain why I'm doing that is you're not supposed to have dead air when you are broadcasting and <laughs> so, and you know, silences are awkward and in a face-to-face -face class that awkward silence can be very useful in some ways. And in the online setting, it doesn't really work out that way. So, <laughs> Um, so you will find that there aren't that many gaps. So if you are waiting for a gap to ask, you might be waiting a while. You can always unmute yourself and ask. <laughs> now, so when you are not sure if you can interrupt, that's uh, where chat is really nice because you can just put your question there. You're not interrupting anything and you will make sure that you don't forget anything. If you had a question that you can, it, it's uh, there. And whenever I glance uh, off to the side is when I'm glancing at my chat window to make sure that, um, that no one has mentioned something that I should have addressed. So with that, uh, if there are any questions, this is one of the few opportunities to unmute yourself and ask. <laughs> and if not, uh, we'll move on. And if you remember something, just put it into the chat, please, and I can address it. Oh, so what I want to do for the remaining, oh, I see a hand raised. Did you want to unmute yourself and ask? Um, yeah, 
Um, so I saw before on um, Canvas that you mentioned um, some regular Zoom sessions that would be optional um, for class. Um, do you have a schedule for when those would be yet? Would they be at this time? Oh, yeah. So um, my the regular time I want to do this session in is actually Thursday evening um, for really two reasons. Uh, Tuesday is kind of busy day for me. Um, but, you know, in this first week, I want you to do it today because we have some assignments that are due on Wednesday. So, uh, but okay. the regular time would be Thursday evening. Thursday at 6? Yeah, at 6 p.m. Evening is my Okay, time. thank you. So um, and so um, for either my real time audience or people who are watching the recorded video, if a Thursday 6 p.m. is something that regularly doesn't work for you, let me know so that um, if uh, I should either hold it at a different time or so that it can be taken into account. Uh, I see a couple hands. I think uh, Tanaya had a question first. Yeah, I'm wondering how long those those um, meetings will be are they like an hour or two hours about an hour I get tired after an hour oh, thank you <laughs> sometimes it goes over but I try to end around the 7 p.m will, will it be something that we could leave at an hour because I have a thing at, I have another class at seven on Thursdays so okay yeah, so what I would do really uh, encourage you to do is if you have any questions that you uh, make sure to ask it early on so that I can address it before seven. Uh, and uh, most of these sessions will be recorded. So whatever portion you are able to catch in real time is will be available as recording. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, so I don't know if my window is ordering these uh, hands correctly. I thought I saw Beatrice's hand earlier, but then now I see Veronica's hand. So I don't know whose hand was raised the first. <laughs> oh. Beatrice can go. Oh, thank you. Um, I just wanted to, um, but I guess um, it's already been um, answered. Um, I'm off at six every Thursday from work, so I won't get home until 6.30, but I can resume after. It's not something like we have to be present, is that right? Right, it's uh, completely optional in the sense that one, I'm not taking attendance, <laughs> and, and two, right. most of the meeting will be recorded. So um, whatever information that you missed, it, it'll be in the recording. Got it. Most All right. Of. Thank you. And Veronica. Well, my my questions were essentially answered. Um, so, but I guess if you want, do you want us to inform you if we can't make it regularly to that, uh, to that meeting? Yeah, I would like to know. So, so I guess uh, really the concern for me is if a, there's a, someone who would like to be there, but for a schedule conflict, you can't be, then, um, then I would like to know you know, what other time could work for you. I can't promise that I would move the time, but, um, you know, the thing I probably should do is uh, let me put out, try to put together a survey so that I can get a response from the class more broadly. And um, somehow if this is the worst of time for like half the class, then I should pick a different time. <laughs> and, um, but, you know, it's not, there's no need to let me know if you simply can't make it uh, for a particular meeting. Um, the reason I would want to know if someone can make it is so that if I can figure out if I needed to move the time, that, that is really the reason. Have that answered the question? Yeah, it does. I will email you to let you know that I can't regularly make it at that time. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, so please do. And uh, I will also uh, post a survey to get a sense from the broader class. Um, okay, uh, any other questions from people who haven't had a chance to speak? Going once, going twice. And if any questions come up, please put it into the chat and I will address it at opportune time. 
So uh, for the, uh, sorry, <laughs> that was actually one of the agenda items. <laughs> Any other questions that come out this session? So for the remaining 20 minutes or so, what I want to do is kind of work through the module requirements as a student so that I can highlight some of the pitfalls or some of the oddities about how this class is set up that I've seen people struggle with from time to time. So, uh, so let me do that. I am going to just open the home and new window and let me come in as a test student. So this is the way the course appears to you. And oh, um, and one of the kind of warning or things you should know is if you are accessing the course on the, the mobile Canvas app, um, it's a hit or miss with some of the features. So if something doesn't seem to be working for you for some reason on a Canvas set, try accessing it through a web browser. Mobile web browser is fine. Um, so one thing I think I noticed was, at least last time I used the mobile Canvas set, it doesn't show you this home page. And this home page is where I put in the information that I think everyone should know and the app doesn't show that. So I want you to use the course side on a web browser at least a few times so that you know where things are. So when you're on a web browser, this is what you would see. And one of the course ca or canvas features that I think uh, confuses people sometimes is this to-do list, which can be useful. It puts uh, up these uh, announcements. So I guess that's useful that you see, because this is recent announcement to say it only shows you the most recent one, the single most recent one. So um, uh, this test student haven't seen these three. So I guess it's useful that those three are there. Let me uh, get rid of them as having done. Now, this is the part where the to-do sometimes just confuses people. So you look at uh, you look, look at the to-do and you think, okay, there's a great discussion. Let's go look at that. And this is uh, what you're going to see. Uh, I, I deliberately reset the test system so that um, it kind of shows up as it would appear to someone who's new to the class. And I guess the way I set up this particular discussion is even more confusing than it would be usually because um, you can see the replies without having posted anything. So, so you are seeing all these replies. So some people must be doing something, but when you there's no prompt, there's no button you can click to do anything. And I think that's naturally confusing to a lot of people. <laughs> um, and if, and even then, if uh, I guess if you slow down and read the error message carefully, it does tell you what to do. It tells you that it's part of this module getting started and hasn't been unlocked yet. Um, one thing I want to point out is that I don't, so it, it, this is missing the agent. It hasn't been unlocked yet, not by me, but unlocked yet by you. <laughs> it hasn't been unlocked by the student because the way the course module items are locked in this class is by this uh, linear progression requirement. You have to start at the top of the module and work your way down and um, but you know, in terms of, I don't lock module items by date. So uh, there are tasks that you need to personally complete to unlock this module. And the message does tell you that completion prerequisites, there's this module that need to be completed and the very first page you can access is this one. And then you have to work your way down. And so, so there's a way to do it, but I think this uh, to-do list, uh, kind of leads to the confusion because you try to use these links to get to these items that uh, that haven't been unlocked yet. And uh, they, that it, uh, the fact that it hasn't been unlocked is confusing to a lot of people. Um, so um, what I really, the way I really recommend that you access this class, which is in the messages here, is through the modules view. Uh, this is start here button, when you click on it, what it'll do is it'll take you to the very first module page. So when you go to the modules view, uh, the start here button will always go to this page, which is great for the first time viewing. <laughs> so uh, it, when you're here for the first time, start here and uh, going to modules and the first page, it'll work the same way. Uh, I guess later in the semester, it's less of a hassle 
to uh, <laughs> code directly to the modules and be able to skip around. And this is the uh, place where I'm trying to explain how the course has been set up. And, and, and I started doing this uh, not that long ago. I think in my first few online classes, I didn't have requirements like this because, you know, I felt like, hey, um, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> I don't <laughs> care that you go through course in order. But what I realized was that for some students, they were going straight to the assignment without realizing that there were all the lectures, all the resources that would have helped them do the assignment and they were struggling. So the module requirements are here really for the purpose of making sure that you know about all the resources. Um, so, so the module requirements themselves are actually pretty light. When you look at the modules, um, you will see that the most of the requirements are view requirement and it's uh, such an easy requirement, you can do it this way. So I just viewed that page. Let me view this page and I'm gonna just go through real quickly because I'm not reading anything, I'm not paying attention. <laughs> and you can technically do that because um, really all that view requirement to restrict to you is into uh, requiring your web browser to load the page so that it's there. Now, because that's how the view requirement works, sometimes I do this. I have a mark as a done requirement um, to slow you down and make sure that um, the page that you might have been, could have been bulging through that, um, that you have a little bit of more time to uh, consider it. And so, you know, all the pages on the module, I do want you to read it. It's just that, you know, I want to make sure that I minimize the PG work on your part. Um, there isn't any mechanism in Canvas to make sure that people read the stuff. So I'm not trying that. <laughs> All I want to do is make sure that you know what information is there. Now I put this mark request on requirement on pages where there's particularly uh, a lot of information, information that's important, um, information that pertain to physics. Uh, that's where I have this mark. It's just another click. It, 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 like, <laughs> Canvas has no way of uh, checking people actually read it, people actually did any of the tasks that were listed here. Um, so I explained the mark as the requirement here. And for this class, what um, I guess, uh, let me skip this and uh, uh, highlight it in another page. So I'll just click on next. So now that page was marked as done. So I'm now here, let me just, keep scrolling through. I do want you to stop and read it, um, but you know, I have only have 12 more minutes for this orientation. And uh, now if you're doing this, then it does stop you from time to time. And uh, this is where modules view is really nice uh, to see what kind of requirements you have to clear to continue progressing through the modules. You read the view requirements, you can kind of look ahead and see any kind of view requirements or pages with some information that it'll take you a few minutes to read it. And if you don't read it, then you can still progress. The pages with the marked on requirement are the ones where, as you will see when I get here, it can take you a fair amount of time, uh, depending on how much time you choose to spend there. But if you just want to mark it as done and move on, then you can. Um, the pages where module items, where it'll take you a fair amount of time really are the ones with the score requirements. Because uh, these are auto graded assignments. I'm not sure if I'll get that far today, but um, this one lets you progress to the next item until you've gotten at least a half or so of the points right. So I'll give you, um, I think of questions for chapter one is easy enough. Like with the chapter two, I will, uh, give you some additional resources to help you uh, earn all the scores you need to. And um, so it, within the module view, you can look ahead, even the items you can access right now, just um, get a sense of how much more work you need to do by what date. So, uh, so let me, um, okay, so I need to get through this discussion, which is contribute requirement. So that means um, I need to actually 
contribute. So I'm just going to reply to this here. Uh, so I did this earlier when I was testing something out, but I reset the student. So I'll just say, oops, I reset the student. So I will click on post reply. And now that I've contributed, I can uh, continue on. Um, and and uh, I wanted to record uh, myself doing the honor code pledge because sometimes this question comes up, uh, how to do it. I, I created a batch earlier today and for most people it looked good. So good job. <laughs> um, uh, sometimes I have people who are either not reading the instructions or <laughs> they're going too fast. So this is how it should be done. The purpose of this quiz is to make sure that you have read this text. And I find that the only way to really ensure that is make sure that you've uh, typed this text. So what I want you to do is what I'm going to do as a test student right now. So let me just type it in. I test student will make uh, submissions that represent my own work. And I'm correcting my typos, but you know, if you have typos, that's fine. Um, what I um, care is that you are a flawless type, that, that you are flawless typist, that's not what I care about. It's that you, um, you have read this small block of text. Anyone else except where explicitly a lot. Uh, engage in plagiarism, not use outside the resources during open book timed assessments, and not uh, engage in any other activities that honestly improve my results or dishonestly damage your book. So, and the way this is set up, when you answer yes here, you'll get two points automatically. I do grade this manually. I um, I uh, uh, take a look at every submission and make sure it looks correct that you actually typed it. I think the most common mistake people make is you just type your own name. And yeah, I do want to see your name, but I also want to see this block, so. Excuse me, sorry, <laughs> my nose. Um, so, so yeah, um, so, so as long as you answer the answer here, you should have two points. And that's the point requirement that'll allow you to proceed to the next module item. So we have a few minutes remaining. Let me, um, yeah, let me just uh, show you the course resources. Um, so yeah. So your textbook will be linked from uh, the within the course modules in these two places. One is the one that says overview of the chapter, and there's an overview video, and these are the links to your textbook. And uh, uh, you can read it here, or if you want to watch the overview video first, and then um, look, follow up with your studying here, then the Pages that are named this way, uh, chapter, readings, and lectures, are the pages that contain, frankly, the lectures that I might have given in a face-to-face -face lecture and uh, links to the textbook. And uh, they are all on one page because um, depending on study style, you might do it one way or the other. Maybe you prefer to watch the lectures first and then read, or um, I think the default assumption is that you might read the textbook first and then the lectures help highlight however you do it, but I will always link the textbook sections first because I think that's, uh, well, that's how I do it, but you know, how I do it isn't necessarily how everyone else does it. So when you uh, follow this link, I'm doing control click to open it at uh, new tabs. It takes you to your textbook, uh, right to the section. And uh, once you are here, if you want to look at the rest of the textbook, it is under here. Um, and this note, I think this will be fine for us because we have one more year. I need to move this content to Libre text, another platform that's more robust and will be around for longer than the CNX, which is kind of old and had been around for a long time, but won't be around that long. Um, OpenStax have their new platform that we are, I don't get my own 
uh, editing access. So this is your textbook, by the way. If you want it more in a more traditional form, you can download a PDF. It's kind of large, I think 100 megabytes or so. Um, but you can. It's also linked from your syllabus. And um, and and if you want to print it out, you can, but um, it, it'll, you'll have to do it yourself. I don't have a, any printed out copies I can hand out. Uh, so this is where your textbook is. And unit one will spend the first uh, uh, four weeks or so uh, going through the unit one. And um, each uh, textbook section, as you are covering it, you will see those uh, uh, sections linked directly from the Canvas module. And that's really why I'm saying once you have access to Canvas, you have everything. You have access to textbook. And uh, oh, and so this is the place. So, you know, if you simply click on next, um, you will have gotten stuck by this again. And uh, this is the place where I explain what Mark has done means, well, to me, or what, what it means in this class. Because in this particular, on this page, there wasn't any, um, any task for you to complete. So uh, the reason I said Mark has the requirement here is to, I still don't explain what Mark has done means for this class. Well, you will see explain it later. What Mark has done means in this class default is um, you take responsibility for the material on the page. So, um, so that's concerning with this one. You should know what textbook sections cover. So, um, so I marked it as done, and then now I can move on. Now, you know, Canvas doesn't check if you watch the video. I hope you watch it. I hope it's useful, but uh, I have no mechanism to make you watch it. Now, this is one of your major homework items. And this is on a platform called MyOpenMath, but it will uh, integrated with your Canvas shell. So you just access it through Canvas as the test student is doing right now. And, and you know, it's auto-graded. So if I'm just checking some things uh, without reading. <laughs> so, you know, if you get it wrong, you get it immediately. So you can read it and let me actually read it and answer this correctly. So physics has many application in biological sciences. So biological science uh, explains, I don't think physics explains that, at least I can explain that. Uh, there is no difference. Um, I think that's organic chemistry, not physics. Uh, to describe properties of cell walls and then I feel like no, but we'll see. Explain sensory phenomena involving sound. Possibly we do talk about sound and light, medical tools, yeah, and dynamics of human body a little bit. So really, um, I feel like we don't ever I think the textbook section claims that. I don't know if I can explain properties of cell walls and membranes, but anyways. <laughs> um, so that's one of the upside of this particular assignment format is that you get immediate feedback and you have practically unlimited attempts that uh, helps and you do not lose any point for using hints. Uh, this is just a toggle button that either shows, and a lot of the hints are simply telling you review the section. <laughs> From time to time, hint will give you more substantial information, but all this is just a toggle button. So the system doesn't even record if you clicked on it. So, um, so I do recommend that you, if, if it feels like you're stuck, then do make use of hints, don't struggle unnecessarily. So, um, and now, uh, because this is also linked through Canvas, this is why I'm saying that, you know, once you have access to Canvas, you have uh, access to everything. So I think that's uh, more or less everything that I need to demonstrate in this um, online orientation. And as long as you are looking, using modules to look at the course, kind of look ahead to what you need to complete and work your way from top to bottom. Um, it should, I hope uh, the instructions make sense and uh, in places where they don't make sense, let me know, send me a message. I usually answer messages and emails within 24 hours, often sooner. So, and uh, and this virtual class session, <laughs> regular session will be one of the times to address it as well. 
So, uh, so for this week, I think I'm going to hold this session again on Thursday to go over some of the things. I actually wanted to uh, do this thing um, and uh, let me do that on Thursday. So I'll uh, post an announcement, just letting people know I'm holding this session again on Thursday, but on Thursday it won't be an orientation session anymore. I will be doing that. So, okay, uh, so I think that's a, Everything I have, uh, all the time I have anyway. Um, if there are any burning questions people want to ask on the recording, I'm happy to answer them. Not seeing any immediate questions. Let me stop the recording here. I'm saying goodbye to people who are joining this uh, orientation session by recording the video. Thank you for joining. Um, goodbye. I hope to see you maybe Thursday or one of the future sessions.